Clinics are part of BCHN, um, and it's been a wonderful partnership for us because it links us with a lot of other essential service providers in the Bronx that are working in different settings. Um, uh, we're in uh, 21 different schools, and uh, the model that we've developed is one where we've, we've been working very hard to incorporate a public health workforce as part of the primary care team. And the um, BCHN has been a great champion in that because that's their model of care no matter what setting they provide services in. And the REACH Champs project was one that has specifically has funding for our public health workforce to focus on specific issues in specific communities that are particularly uh, troublesome. And our focus is on obesity. Um, our public health staff are community organizers. We have one full-time community organizer in each of our school clinics. Um, our school clinics are uh, health centers in public schools. Um, each has a staff of a full-time receptionist, full-time licensed practical nurse, a full-time mental provider, full-time medical provider, part-time dentist, and a community health provider. Um, the community health provider does population-based programs on the classroom, school, and local community level. And we're focused in three areas. One is obesity prevention. That translates to improved nutrition and improved opportunities for physical activity. On reproductive health, uh, for healthy, uh, healthy sexual relationships. So it's about family planning. It's human sexuality education and knowing and healthy relationships. And the third is emotional health, and it's also working on a healthy lifestyle that includes relaxation, uh, it, development of friendships, conflict resolution, violence prevention. And so our focus is not talking about it, but having very, very specific programs that if implemented on a large scale, children will result in a better day. It's really for kids to have a good day. So focusing it on obesity prevention, our focus is on having activities built into the school day, our focus in the school, that most children will go through, by just going through a normal day, will have 30 to 60 minutes of physical activity and will be offered and eating five to nine portions of fruits and vegetables a day. And there's no one program that will do that. The idea is that we keep building up the programs little by little to reach a tipping point that just, that every child by one way or another is touched with it. So, for example, um, Cook Shop is a program, it's a community-based organization that does uh, cooking in, in classrooms. It's in third grade classes and they, the kids learn how to cook 14 healthy meals using fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. The homework assignment is to do it 10 times at home. Um, and so, and the idea is that, I don't know if you've ever had nutrition education, uh, kids hate it and they don't remember it and it doesn't really translate to healthier eating. But skills mastery does. You know, um, I know when I was in college, the only person who liked what I cooked was me. And that was, that was because I made it. It tasted great to me. And, and um, I think that's what we're banking on here, that kids will cook, eat what they know how to make. And they enjoy being able to do things for themselves. So they learn and master 14 lessons. Our ultimate objective with that is that it, through the Board of Ed, we get a policy through called Healthy Living Objectives that part of graduating elementary school, the school has to demonstrate that children know how to cook 14 healthy meals. So that's Cook Shop. Uh, the food film series is, uh, we have films like Super Size Me, Food Inc. They're really consciousness raising films that kids start thinking about where food is coming from and that they start demanding healthier options in school. Um, what isn't up here, uh, programs that we also have are uh, schools are eligible to get 
uh, fresh fruit grants and we work with the school to make sure that they all have a fresh fruit grant so they have fresh fruit for breakfast, vegetable um, options for lunch, um, healthy snack policies. Um, we're working on getting uh, water filters in the clinic and a water filter campaign that people start feeling safe drinking tap water again, uh, which is very healthy and you have to, it's an alternative to soda. Uh, we did a 1% milk campaign which got sweetened milk off of the cafeteria menu. Um, and so each program is targeted like that. Uh, once we, we pilot them, and with this grant, our goal is to flip them to mainstream them. So they're not a club or not an after school activity, but it's something that's part of phys ed and built into every child's day. Uh, the Saturday Family Adventure Program, we have kids with their families meet on Saturday mornings and we go to points of interest around the city, the Statue of Liberty, Museum of Natural History, pumpkin carving in Central Park, Sony Works of Wonder. And the idea is if you get out, you know, you walk to the subway, you walk to these places, you're walking around all day, you take thousands of steps instead of being in the apartment. And the idea is to slowly evolve to a lifestyle change that families start getting used to going out and about in the city. Again, any one of them um, in and of itself won't result in everybody being out and moving 30, 60 minutes a day. But if you put them all together, it slowly chips away and you start having a different route through your day. Um, active recess. Uh, many schools, <clears throat> elementary schools, uh, recess is going to the auditorium and watching videos. So we work with the schools that they have the kids out in the schoolyard running around during recess. Um, in some schools it's taken us almost two years to make that change. But once we do it, you have a thousand kids running around for 10 or 15 minutes a day. Uh, we have an in-class aerobic exercise, short burst aerobic exercise program for schools that don't have gyms. And so two or three times a day the teachers can lead the, the students through 10 minutes of aerobic exercise set to music with a lesson plan and there they get 10 to 20 minutes of physical activity. And so um, we also through uh, the REACH Champs program are partnering on trying to have healthier food options in the bodegas. It's a partnership with the health department in the Bronx and looking at programs that are going on in the health centers that we can bring into the schools, looking at programs we're doing in the schools that can go to the health center that we kind of cross fertilize. Um, we feel in terms of uh, healthy choices that let kids learning how to make healthy choices. I'm not a big believer in that. Um, I'm a big believer that adults have a responsibility to create environments that every choice is healthy. Um, the kids don't have freedom. We, the freedom they have is what we give to them. And the healthier the environment, the more freedom we can give. Um, uh, we do it for babies. You safety proof a house. We work with every new family you know, that the environment is safe so a baby can crawl around and look around the environment. You don't have to keep on running to keep them from falling down the stairs or pulling something on them. And we feel the same thing in school, you know. We don't want kids learning to pick water instead of soda. We think there should just be healthy beverages. Um, at lunch, we don't want a big display where they can have chocolate pudding, you know, um, very greasy fried foods, um, very fatty sandwiches, chocolate milk, and train them to on discipline and self-control that they pick, you know, 1% milk. We think the choice should be 1% milk, that's it. You know, so you create a healthy environment and then kids can have more freedom. Um, so I think the, the REACH Champs program is a great opportunity really to focus on this, that it's a core part of health care and primary care and it's giving us a chance to really build up and fund a public health force as part of our clinic. Um, so we're really excited about participating in it and really looking forward to evolving it and to have community partners and program partners to work with us. Um, so that's kind of a little snapshot of what we're doing. I don't know if anyone has any questions. So yeah. 
Um, the green prescription program is actually being done through the community health centers and the, uh, the primary care providers of patients can write a prescription for food and, um, and fruits and vegetables with uh, food bucks, I think they're called. Is that what they're called? Health bucks. And it's a prescription to the local farmer's market that they go for broccoli or fresh vegetables with uh, resources to buy it. And it's really, and so it's kind of a, you go and do that with, you know, prescription for healthy eating. Yeah. Paul? Can you talk a little bit about the evidence you have that some of these programs work? Sure. Um, so we know that over a thousand children, third graders every year know how to cook 14 healthy meals, you know, doing it at home. Uh, we had a learn to ride program, you know, where we train kids to ride bicycles. Uh, 260 out of 325 third to fifth graders learned how to ride bicycles. Um, uh, the Family Adventure Program, uh, we have over 1,600 uh, family and students going to 10 different venues in the city every year. We know they're taking uh, over 4,000 steps to go to each program. Um, our in-class aerobic exercise program, we demonstrated that kids are taking about 600 more steps per day than kids that don't have it in their classroom. You know, so it's all little increments, you know, a little more physically active, a little more moving around. Uh, we know that the 1% milk campaign, that they, they did, CDC did a review in New York City that there were 4 billion less calories consumed in a, in a school year because kids were drinking 1% unsweetened milk instead of sweetened milk and whole milk. So there's some evidence that it's having some effect. Okay. For kids that are lactose intolerant, what do you suggest that they drink? Like soy milk or some, or 100% juice or something else? So um, uh, the question was for uh, children that are lactose intolerant and can't drink milk. So there's lactate, which is a milk that doesn't have lactose, and soy-based products are good. And those all have the calcium. The reason uh, there's recommendation for milk is for children's need for calcium for strong bones. Yeah, so uh, juice is not an equal substitute. It's more a um, lactose-free calcium beverage. Also, almond milk, rice milk products, um, they have calcium in them. Well, thank you very much.